Liger Zero Schneider. This is one combat zoid designed for superior close range battle. Equipped with four high output thrusters and two shoulder mounted high output thrusters, as well as seven laser blades, it can cut down even the fiercest enemy. Let Liger and me take care of that last one. Don't push your zoid bit, we'll handle it. No, you won't! Now let's go blow him away, partner! The Zero Schneider, also known as the Windows Vista of Zoids because it stops responding harder than my wife when I start nerding out over New Century, and I'm quite sure that Doc Taurus cheaped out on its RAM, leaving Bit stranded a couple of times. Join me as I throw one into a cauldron of ideas and see what comes out the other side. Okay, so today I'll be turning a second-hand eBay bought Schneider into a wacky custom display using various products and bits. This took a bit longer than I thought it was initially going to take, because originally I was only going to just paint it. But that blew out pretty fast and turned into fiddling with a cockpit light, color changing paint, and a display base. Starting off, the model I used was as mentioned, purchased on eBay as a duo of Lagazeros with Schneider armor included. But it was a gamble, as it was listed as incomplete, and thankfully there was enough specifically for the Schneider, which is all I really wanted. Breaking down the pair, I found that the previous owner had glued one of the zeros and in places used entirely too much glue, with areas where it had spewed out after being made, which rendered sections of the Zoid completely unusable for what I wanted to do. Once I stripped all of them down and checked for any breaks and what I needed parts wise, I proceeded to go through and check off and build the bare zero with no basic or Schneider armor while drilling and pathing the wires from the cockpit to the Neo base port in the belly section of the torso. With the intention of feeding the wires down the Neo base arm and eventually leading them underneath the base itself. It took a little while, but I got through it nice and neat in the end while managing to keep the full movement of the frame, so that was a win. Next up was double checking all of the Schneider pieces and for the sake of ease, I cracked the box to my actual Schneider kit to use the manual from there, as the one that came with the duo was the CAS manual and two base zero manuals. And once I was happy with all of the pieces being present, they got sorted into color tubs based on the mental idea that I'd cooked up so far. With all of the build and color sorting done for now, I decided to move on to the Neo base, hacking and slashing in preparation for the wires being fed through it, which meant I needed a Neo base, and luckily for me, Canberra Hobbies had them available, along with a Megami kit that I was chasing, so that was a nice two birds with one stone moment. Quick note though, I'm dumb, and I forgot to hit record on the camera for this entire first Neo base section. Setting out on the Neo Base kit itself, I used the same drill bit throughout the entire project to ensure that the wires wouldn't meet any issues along the way, and this meant the top of the Neo Base connector had to be removed and properly hard connected to the belly of the Zero, which I used a soldering iron tip to lightly melt a couple of spots together before a few coats of Zappa Cap slow drying glue was added to ensure that it wouldn't go anywhere. I should also note that most of the Zero still comes apart if I absolutely need to get in there, or perhaps change a light if it fails. When I was done fiddling and happy enough with the base modifications, and checked the wires would fit and work, I began the pre-paint tidy up, sanding and cutting away anything that didn't need to be there. Starting the painting steps, I decided from the beginning to use my first custom painted Zoid, the Panzer, as inspiration for this one. To go a little further in depth, my Panzer was painted in a World War II German Jagdpanther style colouring, with the entire underbody being painted vaguely akin to an early war German grey tank, and the main difference between the Schneider idea and the Panzer was the fact that the Panzer was done as a beat up old war dog, while the Schneider would be an active service appearing zoid and retain some level of Koto style panel lining and actual Schneider colouring in spirit, while having a strange colour changing take to the zoid as a whole. Starting off with a quick splash of Tamiya Haze Grey Spray as the primer, I used AK Interactive's German Grey Kit to add some more basic touches overall, with the intent of later layering in a mix of Games Workshop's Black Ink and Null Noil to be applied over the top when it was ready. 
I thought because the armor was going to be quite intense, I didn't want the underbody to steal the show, but also not be too basic and left out. So I only added simple touches that would be minimal and continue through to the armor for continuity, such as the hyper silver lugs here and there across the whole finished product. The lineup of colors I used by SMS for the main meat of the model were Color Shift Lava for the main Zero and Schneider pieces, Abyss for the darker Schneider sections, Sunset for the lugs, Prismatic Silver for the blades, Old Gold for the fangs and claws, and Cosmic Dust for the blade connecting areas. All of the pieces were undercoated with the Jet Black PL30 from SMS, with the exception being all of the Zero and Orange Schneider armor which I used Tamiya Gloss Black TS spray for, and I did outside of the booth, to ensure that it would be a bit more grubby because the SMS paints come up pristine. And for those areas, I wanted the final imperfect look to just see how it finishes. Personally, I like imperfections, especially on mechanical builds. So I also snapped off one of the left hand blade connectors on the cheek armor, and refused it back on with some hyper silver and rust effect, as a bit of a small nod to Bit Schneider in the episodes. But it turns out that's not where it broke in the show, and I'm just dumb. It was also at this point where my compressor broke, being the fourth Azito air compressor from Bunnings I've owned, and that was the final straw. So I ordered a Seng, and sat on the project for a moment to muck around with the previous uploaded Jaeger. When the Seng arrived, I was a bit surprised at how small it was, and quiet too. And it turns out it just dumpsters on the Azito, big time. So it was kind of a forced upgrade, I guess. Moving on from finishing the main spraying, it was at this point I started brainstorming up how I was going to finish off the base, and landed on a desert scene with the button hidden for the cockpit lights underneath. Selecting the finest rock from a job site I was at during the week and giving it a clean off, I was satisfied with the colouring and shape and proceeded to box up a chunk of super fine MDF particle board dust from one of the extractors at work for use as the sand. Sealing the gaps of the Neo base was fairly straightforward, applying strips of tape over the underside after attaching the battery button where I wanted it. Then I put a small dollop of PVA glue at the bottom of each hole touching the tape, and more or less making a seal, before making a barrier of tape also around the edges. Oh, I also zap capped my uh, rock in place where I wanted it, very important information. I then carefully poured and filled all of the holes and the top with a clear green layer of anycubic UV resin and gave it a brief spin in the resin cura, leaving it out for the sunlight in the spare room the next day, giving it enough time to go hard and be ready for me when I got home. Removing the tape and tidying up the resin with a light sand and scalpel session, I used the same basic PVA to make a light layer across the whole surface of the base and add in some of the particle dust to build up layers until I had enough there for me to use a spray bottle and slowly but surely apply a heavy amount of misty water to the base. This creates bubbles in the dust. The reason for this is when it's done, you can lift up and shake free the excess water and dust which leaves a nice surface in the spirit of a desert look. Looking windswept and in some places, craggy from where I'd use the scalpel. Next was a nice heavy layer of Dulux Matte Clear Acrylic Spray over the entire base to secure any loose areas and bind it down. And when it had enough time to harden, I coated the top in Seraphim Sapia from Games Workshop and once again let it sit. Finally, the dusty look was achieved with a generously thick top coat of MIG's North African Dust Pigment when necessary and followed up with some Gamer Grass Small Autumn Tufts to keep it a little less boring. With the final assembling and fiddling with the wiring through the Neo Base arms and sections, I fixed the gears in place and locked the arm in, and while the zapper cap dried, I soldered the wires together and hid them under the base. I'm really happy with how this turned out, even if it's a bit of a strange look, and I find myself constantly staring at it, bobbing my head about to watch it change shades and colours. So I hope you guys will like it too.
I'm not gonna lie, when the random wires and a battery box and things came with my Supernova Mugen Liger, I had no idea what the hell they were, but I get it now. This is just a cool little bit of extra modeling you can do for fun, and I'm sold. I now have plans to add lights to some of my other Zoids, with a refusal to let my Panzer be one-upped by a Schneider. I've got a special idea in mind, and a bunch of others for Megami Mecha Girls, and even some 35th scale kits hopefully. I really am happy with this, and I hope you guys found it at least interesting, because this channel is all a passion project for me to share my love of modelling with others. So rest assured if this did tick a box for you, there will be more at future stages. I guess that's about it for now, so uh, until the next one, take it easy.